Hello everyone. This is a very interesting class. In this class, we are going to discuss about horizontal analysis and how to analyze ratios for a company. And we are going to see three examples. One is of Tesla, one is of Google, and one is of Alibaba. So one is a e-commerce giant, one is into automated cars as well as electric cars, and third is into a uh, third is a search engine. Okay. So let's start. So in the first way to analyze ratios is horizontal analysis in horizontal analysis we simply find out trend how do you compute trend so it is current period data divided by previous year period data minus 1 so you check whether the ratio has increased or the ratio has decreased that is what you look at so to understand how to do it, let us jump into examples and analyze things one by one. So we'll start with Alibaba. So e-commerce giant from China listed on NYSC. I am taking this data from Capital IQ. I have an access to Capital IQ. And this is just for information and knowledge purpose. You should not base your investment decisions based on this. Okay. So let's look at what Alibaba has done in terms of ratios. So first is, is return on assets. So let us do a horizontal analysis quickly. And that is trend analysis. This is also known as time series analysis. So it is colloquially known as time series rather than horizontal. So we'll just write time series. So in time series analysis, you divide current periods data divided by previous periods data minus one. So a lot of digits. We don't want so many. We just want a single digit number. Okay. I'm just dragging it to bottom. Then we are going to discuss each ratio one by one. I'll quickly clean up the data also so this divide by zero thing I'll delete this divide by zero thing I'll delete this I'll delete okay I'll hide these columns so that we can just interpret the trend. So whenever you are doing horizontal or time series analysis on ratios, it's simply current periods data, current periods ratio divided by previous periods ratio minus one. And then if we can write the interpretation for it. So simple thing we are going to follow if this thing, if increase or decrease is good, we are going to mark it green. Otherwise we are going to mark it red. So return on assets are this, this ratio of return on assets is up by 5%. So just for your information from the previous class, return on asset is net income divided by average assets. So it indicates efficiency. Sorry, it indicates the returns that you are giving on assets. So how much returns does the company give on asset and it has gone up. For example, the return on asset was 7%. Now it is 7.4%. So on $100 of asset, it is giving, it was generating $7 of revenue. Now it is generating $7.4 of revenue. So it is the efficiency of using asset is up. So or rather more income on assets. That's a good sign for us. Return on capital. Capital is both equity and debt. So it measures EBITDA or divided by return on total capital. That is equity as well as shareholders equity. Uh, debt as well as shareholders equity. So it indicates how much return the company is generating for all the shareholders. It was 8.5% in this quarter, March quarter. Now in December it is 9.3. So it has gone up. It's a positive sign. So more income on debt as well as equity 
then you have return on equity return on equity indicates how much returns you are generating for equity shareholders earlier it was 14.4 percent currently it is 17.6 percent so 22 percent increase in return on equity so more income for equity shareholders that's also a good sign the next type of ratio is margins EBITDA margin indicates operating efficiency PAT margin indicates total efficiency so that in, that is inclusive of operating as well as financial decisions so operating efficiency has gone down that's not a good sign so less operationally efficient so Alibaba is less operationally efficient than in past but it is more total efficient so total efficiency has gone up so it is better than past vis-a-vis -vis total efficiency it means indirectly it is making good financial decisions okay total asset turnover has gone up it indicates efficiency of using assets so it's a efficiency of using asset has gone up fixed asset turnover is efficiency of using fixed asset that has gone down Okay. Then the next ratio is current ratio. So current ratio is current assets divided by current liability. The increase in ratio is good, decrease is bad. This ratio has increased one percent. So good it is good for us. But quick ratio has decreased. Quick ratio is adjusted by inventory. Means current assets are divided by current liability, but current assets are adjusted first by inventory. So it has gone down. So that is not good. Now, debt to equity, we want lesser debt. Debt is equivalent to risk for us. So we want lesser debt. So debt has gone up. That's not a great sign. Debt to capital debt has gone up total liabilities to total assets we want more assets vis-a-vis -vis liabilities so increase in liabilities not so good for us earning before interest tag divided by interest it shows you how much earnings you have to cover your interest expense so earnings have gone up so better viability in near future so that's good for us increase in valuations is bad decrease in valuations is good if you are a value investor so ratios are almost same so i will highlight neutral so just to recap this company was alibaba return on return on assets equity as well as capital have improved so that's good making good financial decisions using its total assets better has better short-term liquidity so inventory if you consider it has better short-term liquidity it has more revenues to cover its interest expense as well as valuations are almost similar so company has gotten better on certain aspects bad parts its operation operating efficiencies is not so good EBITDA margin is down fixed asset it is not using fixed asset as it was using in earlier days Quick ratio has gone down, so short term liquidity has gone down, debt has gone up, so that's a sign that you need to consider. So let's go to next company. Next is Tesla. So this this is these are ratios of Tesla. We'll do the same thing. We'll find out, we'll do a time series analysis on these ratios and we'll highlight the will write down the interpretation okay so time series is sim simply current periods data divided by previous periods data minus one
or we can simply say we can simply interpret it quickly rather than doing this analysis the return on assets has fallen so it was negative 2.5 percent now it is negative 4 bad sign return on capital has fallen bad sign return on equity has fallen bad sign EBITDA margins have fallen so bad sign net income margin has fallen further so bad sign total asset turnover almost same so neutral fixed asset turnover almost same so neutral current ratio has fallen bad sign we want current ratios to improve quick ratio has fallen bad sign debt has increased bad sign debt versus capital has increased bad sign total liabilities have increased visa vis total assets bad sign price by earnings price by book value has increased bad sign price ev by beta has increased bad sign so what is happening with tesla so it is it was it is generating negative returns on assets capital and as well as equity its operating efficiency has gone down its asset turnover is almost same so nothing to do or worry about it its short term liquidity position in current ratio and quick ratio has gone down its debt has increased and it is getting costlier day by day to buy into the stock because valuations are high now Tesla is trying to change the world by its electric cars and automotive cars. If this is the situation, you can consider the consider a turnaround story. So currently financial ratios don't look good for Tesla. But going forward, if you believe that this financial ratios would seriously take an uptake and turn around because Tesla is changing the world. And when you change the world, you cannot worry about financials. So you can consider the future aspect of financials and maybe decide to invest or not but currently on based on financials thing to talk about next is alphabet or google so return on assets have improved so good return on capital has improved good return on equity has fallen not so good EBITDA margin improved so operating efficiency is better so good sign for Google net income margin is improved so good sign asset turnover as well as fixed asset turnover almost same so nothing much to discuss there current ratio has fallen so short term liquidity has fallen quick ratio has fallen so short term liquidity has fallen then you have total debt so debt has fallen versus equity and versus capital good sign total debt to total assets debt, debt has in liabilities have increased as well compared to assets so not so good sign EBITDA divided by interest expense interest coverage ratio has gone up good sign so it has more income to pay its interest and price by earnings have shot up as well as price by book value have shot up so company is costlier to buy visa vis its past so google better returns for on assets and capital then operational efficiency is net as well as net income and net uh, pat efficiency profit after tax efficiency means operational efficiency as well as financial efficiency has gone up debt has fallen versus equity that's a good sign debt has fallen versus capital that's a good sign more income to cover its interest expense bad things less return on equity then short term liquidity has gone down total liabilities have increased versus assets as well as the company is getting costlier day by day to buy into and we have completed these three statements Alibaba, Tesla and Alphabet that is Google so just to recap 
horizontal analysis is finding trends you compare previous periods data versus this periods data and then you decide whether the ratio has increased and decreased and whether it is good or bad these three companies we have discussed these are only for illustration purpose of the concept i am not recommending you to buy or sell anything i am not even commenting on what this what the future of these companies would be thank you